So I've been working in Premiere Pro for years and years now, and over the years I've picked up quite a few tips and tricks when it comes to editing in the software. So I want to share with you six of my favorite Premiere Pro tips in relation to the timeline. And these tips will help you stay organized and help you streamline your workflow. So let's get started here. My first tip is pretty straightforward and simple, and it has to do with navigation and navigating within your timeline here. Now, oftentimes you can just click and move your playhead over your sequence and find your clip or use the arrow keys to go frame by frame to specify a certain area. But let's say you're working with a client and you're we're working with a script that has time code and your client wants you to do some pretty specific edits down to the second. So what you could do here is you can actually select your playhead position here, click on the time code and you can manually type in a time code. So let's say the client says something um, about at the one minute mark, you could click, go straight to the one minute mark and then make your edit. And then if they want to come out or end our cut at one minute, one second, you can type that in and simple as that. This is very useful if you're working on a really, really long project. Or again, if you're working with a client with a pretty particular script that has time code within the script, this is a very helpful method. For our next tip, I want to show you how markers can be used to help label your timeline and stay organized. This is great if you're working with a client and you want the client to be able to easily reference items on your timeline, easily understand what's going on. Or if you're working with another editor, the same thing goes, they can understand what you're doing. Or for yourself, if you're opening up a project that you worked on um, a while ago and you don't remember what you were doing, you can quickly reference what was going on with your labeled markers. So let me show you how you can do this. You can create a sequence marker or you can create a clip marker. So first let me show you clip markers. So I can, let me open this up. So I can quickly add a clip marker by selecting a clip, pressing M and press M again and it will bring up the marker dialog box. I can select the color. Let's say we want to tell another editor to trim this clip. Trim head and tail of clip uh, three frames, something super specific. Then we'll get the duration out there and we'll move this actually. Let's see if we can, can actually move the marker here so we can read it all. And I'm moving it in the source panel. You can see it here. Now we can actually read it on our timeline. And if I zoom in here, now we can see our clip marker with the label. Now let's do this to our second clip here. Hit M, M again. You can select a different color and write in the name approved. Expand the duration. And now we can see here quickly that this clip is approved. Now we can do this as well to the sequence. So if you don't have any clips selected and you hit M, it's going to add a marker to your sequence. And I'll hit M again to launch the marker dialog box. And I can do the same thing. Let's say we want to show that a certain sequence or a certain area of our timeline is uh, like the edit is locked and approved. So we could just do that. And then we can add more markers to show needs work trim, whatever we want to write. And we can write stuff in the comments as well. Ripple, delete, whatever we want to write. And again, these are all comment markers. Select OK. Actually, I need to open that back up and expand the duration. Click OK. And there we go. And you can see these markers are really great. They show up in the source monitor and they show up on our program monitor as well. So it really helps you, you know, quickly reference what's going on in your project. Our next tip is working with track height presets. Now tracks you can find here, we have audio and video tracks. You can add and delete tracks by control clicking or right clicking anywhere in the header section here. You can add track, delete track, you can delete empty tracks. But what we want to do is we want to create, let's say we were working on editing some audio. So we want to see our audio track, our audio track one here. Let's say we're working strictly in the first two audio tracks and we want to have those expanded so we can see what exactly is going on and that's how we want and let's say we're working in 
we want to have this layout set up and then later we're going to be working on some video so we want to have our video tracks expanded and these minimized so what we can do to qu quickly switch between these two is to create track height presets so to do that simply set up the track heights to how you want them and then go over here to timeline display settings and right here you're gonna see all your track shortcuts here where you can quickly minimize all the tracks you can quickly expand all the tracks and here you can create your presets so I'm gonna click save preset and name this audio workflow we could even assign a keyboard shortcut if we wanted to really quickly switch between presets select OK and now I can go to minimize all tracks let's say we opened up a new project and we want to work on our audio we can really quickly go audio workflow and there it sets up our interface how exactly how we like it so in addition to using clip and sequent markers to stay organized you can also change the actual color of your clips here and I already have it slightly customized I have all my audio set to this forest green color and the video clips set to this iris blue so we can change these by control clicking or right clicking and if you go to label right here you're gonna see there's a variety of different colors we can choose so I could change this whole clip to iris or you know what I usually do is as I edit I will label a clip once I know it's, it's I'm done with that section I will just change the color to whatever color I'm using at that time which could be rose or whatever and then as I when I zoom out and I look at the entire sequence I can see all the clips that I know I've finished and all the clips I know I need to continue editing on if you want to customize this even further you can go into your preferences and you can go into label colors and label defaults and you can create your own colors with uh, your hex hex numbers or whatever you whatever you want to create here and you can set your defaults of your particular assets now when you're working with audio in Adobe Premiere Pro you can work with audio waveforms here on your timeline and there's a variety of different ways you can customize your audio waveform display to customize the waveforms go up here to the panel menu and you'll see you have a few different options here now these are simply uh, either checked on or I can turn them off so first we have the audio waveforms use label color we can select that and turn that off watch what happens to our rose colored clip it's going to simply change the display of our colors we can change from rectified audio waveforms to standard and last but not least we can select whether we want logarithmic waveform scaling we can turn that off and last but not least you can customize your audio and video track headers and basically what you can do is you can control all the little buttons within your headers here if I expand my video track as well and we look at some of these buttons here this is all customizable so if I go to my video track here I can right click or control click and go down to customize and that's gonna bring up the button editor and it'll show me all the buttons I can use for my video header if I want to get rid of some of these things such as toggle sync lock and I can actually reorder some of these options select OK and then you'll see here now our video track is reordered and customized we can do the same thing with our audio track if I go down to our audio track and click customize and you can see there's quite a few additional buttons in the button editor for, button editor for our audio track which again I can customize to my heart's content I can get rid of this voiceover record select OK or I can just reset the layout to the default select OK and there we go if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments section give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend I'm working hard on future tutorials so be sure to subscribe to the channel or you can visit my website at boonlovesvideo.com to check out more content if you have a tutorial request just shoot me a message and I'll create something specifically for you alright I'll see you next time